What's up? I am Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad and this video is specifically for all of those people who are thinking of traveling from India to Canada during these times. All those people who wish to travel during these times must be aware of the Vande Bharat mission operated by Government of India and Air India. So in this video I will be talking to Akhilesh who has travelled from Pune to Toronto via Delhi and he'll share his experiences of the Vande Bharat mission, how easy or difficult is it to book the tickets, uh, how safe is it to travel during these conditions, what are the precautions that are being taken care by the airport and the uh, you know, flight attendants. We'll talk all about it in this video, so don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. And before we start this video, I want to tell you that now we can connect over Instagram as well. You can look for me. My ID is Dreamers Abroad. Please note, it's not Dream Abroad, it's Dreamers Abroad. So if you're there on Insta, what are you waiting for? Let's connect on Instagram as well. Right, guys, so finally we have Akhilesh here, who has just came to Canada just a few days ago through Vande Bharat Mission, one of the flights of Vande Bharat Mission. So, uh, thank you Akhilesh for agreeing to do this video. Welcome. Thank you Siddhanshu for having me uh, on this channel. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, what's your name? What's uh, where you came from? And what do you do? Yes. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Akhilesh Shivde. I am from Pune, Maharashtra. I am a practicing criminal lawyer in Pune. Was your visa expiring or uh, what, was, what was about it? Like uh, when was your COP expiring? Yeah, so uh, I got my uh, uh, one-time visa stamp, like PR visa stamped on uh, 15th of March, like right before the travel ban was announced. And my visa was expiring on 21st July, 2020, like this month. So it was a really uh, pressing issue for me to travel to Canada. Did you book tickets through Vande Bharat mission, right? Yes, I opted for Vande Bharat and it was uh, quite difficult to get the tickets. So yes, so let's just discuss about it. Uh, how how easy or how difficult was it to get the tickets? I heard that obviously there are a limited number of seats, so it's very difficult to get the tickets. So how did you get, uh, how did you manage to book those tickets? Yeah, so I had, uh, I took help of, uh, of an agent in Mumbai to get the tickets, but I would suggest that a person can book the tickets on, on uh, like on his own as well. So first thing uh, I got in touch with uh, Air India through Twitter. So I used to keep an eye on their updates, like when the tickets, uh, the, when the bookings will be open for the particular country. So uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, the agent helped me in getting the tickets because uh, the tickets were sold off like in first few minutes. Even in my case, like after the two failed uh, attempts for getting the tickets, I got it at the third attempt. So. Even uh, there were some issues with the Air India website because even the agent and me, we could see like both uh, two different rates for the same flight. Mm -hmm. Oh, for the same flight? Yeah. Okay, that's strange. Okay, so uh, after you booked the tickets, uh, how? what was your experience uh, during the flights? Like, uh, was there social distancing in the airport? Uh, like, in the does it feel safe to be there in the flights uh, in mid of, uh, you know, everyone when you're there the counter maybe the chicken counter maybe the security uh, baggage checking area does it feel safe uh, like obviously i'm talking safe in terms of the uh, pandemic so does it feel safe that uh, you are in a secure zone so in my opinion uh, my domestic flight was pretty much safe because uh, social distancing was followed and even while boarding the flight they boarded us through sections like the first section first and so on and so on but at Delhi airport, uh, I know that everyone is trying very hard at these times, but I didn't find any social distancing or uh, really? anything of that sort. Yeah, no, really? not not even a bit. So you we were like, uh, when I reached Delhi, like from Pune to Delhi, we had to exit the airport and enter the airport once again. So there was this big queue outside the uh, departure uh, entrance. And even after that, uh, during immigration line, there were like 20, 15, 20 counters and at each counter, there were like 15 people or 15 plus people like standing two to three feet near each other. So 
that was kind of concerning for me uh, only at delhi airport but it's okay like everyone is doing their own bit everyone is wearing their mask everyone is using their hand sanitizer and hand sanitizers and stuff like that okay and as it flights so was there social distancing there like i've heard that uh, you know obviously there is spacing they, they leave the uh, middle seats free is that the case or uh, is no. it um, no 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 they, what they are doing is uh, all the people who are sitting in the in between they are giving them uh, the full ppe kit so oh. everyone who was sitting in between were wearing like white gowns mm-hmm. and that's about it that was the only extra thing they were wearing, wearing like the rest of us we were wearing a mask and a face shield and so those face shields those mask um, maybe the pp kits so are all of these things provided by the uh, airlines or is it uh, a passenger who has to carry it with them no no the uh, every flight like uh, even for the domestic and even for the international flight the airline will be providing you with the pp kits and the mask and uh, they were like providing sachets of uh, hand sanitizers as well so they have a list of people who are sitting in between and so they were calling people by their seat numbers and giving them the pp kits like who were sitting in the middle okay so that's that's good to know at least that they're taking care of uh, such things and they're doing things cautiously and that is what making uh, you know people travel even during these times um yes. so i'm i'm glad that you are also safe so okay before we move forward so i have seen some of your memes on uh, canadian pr and so <laughs> so what do you want to tell more about it yeah so the thing is uh, i never was a meme creator but yeah i just thought that i was a uh, part of that group for so long like since a year so i saw that everyone was posting they see this stuff and everyone were, was going through tough times so i just started making few uh, memes on my situation so i kind of posted one and then got good response on the group so i kind of make memes now <laughs> okay so thank you so much for those memes those are really entertaining ones uh now coming over to canada so when you landed here in canada was there social distancing at the airports and uh, how did you reach the accommodation that you booked yeah so uh because uh, i boarded the plane first so there was uh, not much any uh, queue in front of me like i got through the immigration pretty quickly but uh, yeah uh, okay one thing i noticed about the immigration officers none of them were wearing masks was it yeah it it was just me like i was wearing the face shield and the mask and i was kind of feeling stupid but yeah i was the one traveling so i did not take that off you're really not stupid you were the smartest one of them <laughs> okay so yeah. uh so yeah your uh, immigration was pretty smooth uh yeah. you, you booked the cab uh, how did it happen like uh, to, okay so just talk about the uh, accommodation first so how did you book your accommodation before coming to canada yeah i was trying a bunch of, a bunch of airbnbs uh, before i uh, land out came here but uh, i i was able to uh, speak with few hosts who were ready to give me their place for quarantine as well and they were pretty calm about it like they did not uh, mind me uh, being there in these uh, pandemic times but luckily I, like uh, fortunately i got a place uh, through my family friends so i got a good basement apartment in brampton okay that's nice so uh, you are in a secluded place where there's nobody else so you came alone right Yeah, I'm alone, and this place is like all to myself. Even I have a separate entrance. Okay, that's that's great. That's nothing better than that. So, uh, how are you managing the groceries? Like, how you because you have to uh, spend the 14 days quarantine time. So, how are you managing during these times? Obviously, you can't go out even to the grocery store. So, this is a generic question that how would you manage? Just like getting the basic meals. Obviously, you cannot carry each and everything from your home country. You have some like luggage restrictions as well. Um, so how are you managing all of that stuff yeah like i mentioned before uh, i have a few family friends over here and even my uh, friends like from my uh, home city so they uh, are providing me with the essential groceries and stuff also i had to uh, explain the immigration officer what my quarantine plan was but he was uh, not really much interested in knowing the details he just asked me who is going to provide you with the groceries and that's about it that's it okay so would you like to tell our audience about the fines that are in place <laughs> yeah so uh, a lot of people have been uh, saying that uh, does anyone actually check if you are quarantining or not yeah but i came across the rules and regulations regarding those so it read that the rules for breaking the quarantine rules uh, 
the fine for breaking quarantine rules is uh, $750,000 and six months imprisonment. So I think uh, reading that, no one will dare to break the quarantine rules. $750,000? Yeah. Oh, we'll get a no, apartment in that price in Toronto. You don't even have, ever have to live in our rented place. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes, but it's definitely apart from, uh, you know, Apart from the fines, it's definitely uh, beneficial for all of us, uh, not just yes. our sales, uh, for all the people that are around us. That if, because we are traveling from such a long distance, there are chances that uh, we might, you know, catch that virus. If that happens, mm-hmm. obviously we'll spread the virus, and obviously we'll stop the spread. It's very important that we take care of those basic things. It's just 14 days that we have to live by, live, live in a closed space. That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you so much for, uh, for your experience. Uh, so one day my uh, flight was uh, pretty decent. We did not face face much problems apart from uh, booking the tickets, right? Yeah, no problems. Like uh, there was one issue on the flight, uh, like uh, not issue, but they had uh, announced this earlier that uh, the air hostess and uh, they are, they were not going to serve anything. The food was already kept on our seats, and that's about it. Like we could go and uh, get water from the uh, the area where you get food and stuff. And that's about it. So obviously they are taking care. Uh, their lives are also on stake, and they're kind of essential workers. Certainly, so hats off to them as well that they are serving us uh, during these tough times. Okay, so yeah. uh, what are your next plans? Are you thinking of getting a job, or uh, and how are you going to manage your accommodation going further? Would you be staying in the same place? Yeah, it all depends on the job. I have been sending a few applications uh, since I came here. The first thing was to get the phone number because on the CV I needed a Canadian number. So after that, I started sending out a few applications. So let's see now if I get any uh, good response from in and around here, then I will uh, choose to remain in Brampton. But if at all uh, I do get another job in another area, I might have to shift. But yeah, I think I will manage somehow. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm pretty sure that your uh, that your comments and your experience would help a lot of people who are thinking of coming to Canada during these times. Thank you so much, Akhilesh, for uh, being a part of this video. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I just hope that his experiences would help many of you who are planning to travel to Canada during these times. If you haven't subscribed this channel yet, you know the deal. You have to click that subscribe button. And if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. And yes, if you like the video, do not forget to click the thumbs up button as well. Thanks again for watching this video.